What's up everyone? It's been a while since I've done an upgrade guide and that means there's been a ton of updates from the Payload CMS team. Let's walk through each of these together and see what important improvements have been made. So the first thing we're gonna do is just update all of our 3.27 to 3.37 and replace all. And then we're also gonna bump up our next JS dependency up to 15.3.2. Now I can save this and run pnpmi, and we now have everything up to date at the most recent version. So let's start with version 3.28.1. In 3.28 and 3.28.1, a new compilation opt-in flag was added called dev bundle server packages. This can be used to drastically cut compile times during development. You can enable this in your next.config file. So we'll go down to our next config file. And here in with payload, we're going to add an object that says dev bundle server packages, and we'll set this to false. This is opt-in for existing projects because there are instances that unusual behavior may not play well with this new feature. Also in this version, the lexical version was bumped up again, which should not affect your project unless you installed lexical manually. It's not recommended to do that, so you should let the payload lexical dependency take care of that for you. If you insist on having lexical installed manually, simply update your lexical to 0.27.1 if you run into issues. For features, all Next.js metadata is now available to be used in your payload config file. So we can go and find our meta object here. And now we're able to use things like alternates for our canonical options, as well as authors as an array, and even our robots. And I'm not going to set this because as of this version as well, robots.txt defaults to no index and no follow, which means that search engines will not try to crawl your admin UI. You can also now use path in a field validate function. And so we have one of those in our payload config and our plugins in our form submission overrides in the form builder plugin. So we can find where we have our recaptcha field here and invalidate. All we have to do is in this object add path, which then we can just for an example, log our path and that is now available for us. This will log the path of the field, which can then be used in more field logic to validate your field. You're also able now to disable auto link in your link creation in lexical. So to show this, we can spin up our development server and go to our admin panel. And to show off the default functionality of this, we will go to our blog posts, our blog one test. So we can scroll down to our content with media block. And if I paste in a link here, we can see that it automatically creates a link. But if we want to change that behavior, we can add the link feature and set disable auto links. We'll set it to undefined for now, which is the default value. But if we want this to be changed where we don't automatically create a link, we can refresh our admin UI after setting disable auto links to true and then paste in a link and you can see that it no longer creates a link for me. You can of course still create a link by using the link feature here. Also in version 3.28, a new HTML converter was introduced. I'm going to be putting out a new video to implement this converter in the near future. So if you don't want to miss that video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As for bug fixes, version 3.28.1 was introduced quickly after 3.28 to fix a few bugs introduced in 3.28. The cloud storage, Sentry, and Stripe plugins were removed from bundling optimization since they have client exports. Also, the payload team fixed types for label, description, and error for server components. Version 3.29 saw another lexical upgrade, so be sure to upgrade that if you're running into any issues. But you really shouldn't have lexical manually installed. A few of the features that came out for version 3.29 is conditional tabs. So to show this off, we can go to our posts config file, and we're going to create a new checkbox above our tabs field that we're going to call show tab. 
and this will be type of checkbox. So now in our tabs, for the very first tab, we're going to add a label that says show this tab. So this is gonna be the tabs label. It'll have a name of shown tab, and our admin is going to have a condition that will check for data and our sibling data, but specifically we're looking for the show tab field, and then We'll set a Boolean based on the value of show tab. Of course, our fields array is required, but we can pass in an empty fields array. So now if I save this, we are in our blog posts here. So we should see a new checkbox show up called show tab. And if I click it, we see show this tab show up. And then I can click show tab again and it goes away and automatically selects the next tab for me. There has also been added support for the radio field in the form builder plugin. So if I go back to our payload config, I'm in the form builder right here. We can remove the path that I set up here, but in our plugin fields, we can now add a new radio field and we'll just set it to true. And now we can go to our forms go to the contact form, and if we want to add the radio field, we can just add a new field, and we see radio show up here. The big thing in version 3.30 is the Next.js peer dependency bump. Next.js had a major security vulnerability that was patched in Next.js version 15.2.3, which didn't impact payload's source code. However, for good measure, Next.js version 15.2.3 is now the minimum version for payload 3.30 and up. As for features, HTML props are now available on the root layout. So if we go to our payload route group here, we can go to our layout.tsx, and in our root layout, we can now add a new prop called HTML props. And here you can pass in things like a new class name, if you have custom fonts, or anything else that needs to apply globally to your admin UI. As for bug fixes, when you set draft to true, it's now respected by join fields. And that brings us to version 3.31. And straight into the features, you're now able to set presets and share filters for your collections with query presets. So back in our posts.config file, we can enable our query presets, and we'll just set this to true. And what this does is back in our collections, we'll go to our posts, and then we can see that we have this select preset button, but we can also set up a new filter that just checks for the slug of blog one. And then we can create a new preset and just call this blog one, if we want to share it, we can, and it gives us some sharing options, but I'll hit save, and now I can see we have select preset, and I can select blog one and save my presets that way. This comes in handy if you have filters that you use often or want to share a specific filter with a teammate. Version 3.32 introduced orderable collections. If you want this to be applied to the join field, you'll need to add the orderable property to the join field as well. Version 3.35, which we'll get to later, fixes a bug where reordering draft documents could result in data loss. So to set this up, you can just set orderable to true in your collection config. So now we can see that these handles have been added. Now, you may have to select the orderable label here, which is this down arrow with some lines next to it in order to actually use this. If you don't have that selected, you will be prompted to reorder the rows. You must first sort them by the order column, which is what this is right here. So as soon as these dots become more black than grayed out, you are then able to move them. Version 3.33 improved lexical rich text in the version view. This actually renders the rich text change with styles instead of a JSON representation. Version 3.34 introduced the ability to use where queries in join fields. You're now able to query within your join fields on the front end by using where, and then for example, join field dot title equals title. Before version 3.34, this didn't work. Now in version 3.35, if you have a default depth set, it's now respected in the API view. If you don't have it defined, it shows up as two. So in our payload config, we do have a default depth set to two, but I can set this to three, go to our blog two, 
view our API and we see that depth of three is what's used here. If I set it to one, our depth field updates to one. If this is undefined, as I mentioned, depth reverts to two. So we'll leave default depth explicitly as two, just so I know what my depth is at any given time. You can now also render the relationship field as a list drawer. To show this off, we'll go back to our posts config and then in our authors field, I'm going to add to my admin the appearance option and set this to drawer. And so what this is going to do, if I go back to edit and then I go to my authors, if I click here, it's going to open up a drawer instead of just a select dropdown. So the default value for this is the select. And if I save that and open this up, I now have a select instead of that drawer. So this comes in handy if you have a lot of options to choose from and need more context to know what option to choose. As for bug fixes, version 3.35.1 fixes a missing next auth export. Version 3.36 introduced a new before document controls custom component. The document controls are these buttons right here where it says save draft and publish changes. This has been added to both globals and collections, and it allows you to inject an array of custom components next to the control buttons. So for an example, we'll go to our components and we have our root components right here and we can add the edit to edit the custom components on the edit screen. And then we will add our before document controls and we'll add just a path, just like any other custom component and we'll look in our components, admin UI logout.tsx, and we'll pull out our logout export there. And we can see that a logout button has been added to the beginning of our controls here. And as of right now, there is no after document controls, so you only have the ability to add components to the beginning of your document controls. For bug fixes, version 3.36.1 fixes a bug in how orderable collection items were duplicated. This caused a lot of issues with data cleanliness and rendering, but collection items are now rendering and indexing and ordering correctly. Emails can now have more allowable special characters. There was a problem where certain special characters wouldn't pass validation when creating a user. Now all standard special characters are allowed. And finally, in version 3.37, which at the time of this recording is the most recent update. You're now able to command or control click the edit icon to open a relationship in a new tab. This allows you to make updates to a relationship in a new tab if you choose, instead of using the relationship drawer. So if I press command and click on the edit icon, we can see that this opened up in a new tab. A placeholder is now allowed for select and relationship fields as well using admin placeholder. So if we go to our relationship field again, and I add our placeholder, I can put something like select an author. And then if I save this and remove our author, I can see select an author show up here. There was an issue that's now been fixed as of version 3.37, where the environment variables that you already had were being overwritten when you ran create payload app in an existing project. So that should no longer be happening when you install payload into your project. Naturally, the payload team has been busy at work improving the product. New features and bug fixes are released frequently, so I know it can be hard to keep up. I only included things that I found to be important, and I didn't touch on a lot of other releases and bug fixes that might be important to you. So be sure to check the release notes for yourself. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others who might also find it useful. Check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and receiving notifications so you never miss when I release content around Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you have suggestions or questions, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.